Okay, so uh, good morning. My name is Antonio. Uh, I am here today with Maxim Cizal, and we're going to be presenting to you guys a project that we've been uh, developing in Ghana uh, for some months, actually for almost one year. And the, the, the title of the presentation today is the Kremlin Wayland Project. Uh, that's what we will be going to talk about. So a little bit of the agenda of today's presentation. I'm going to go through what Ghana is in uh, one minute, uh, just for those watching uh, on YouTube later on. Uh, then goes the motivation of the project itself, a little bit of background, then the developments that we've done, and we're going to do some demonstration as well. So first thing uh, about Igalia, uh, what Igalia is. So Igalia is a worker owned uh, employee run open source consultants company that's based in Galicia, Spain, where we are uh, today. Uh, in the map, we, we are in the north uh, west part of Spain, over there. As you can see, we are 62 today around the globe, and we have various areas of uh, that we work on, uh, including Blink Blinkron, which is uh, the area that we participate on. But we also do several uh, WebKit. Uh, we work a lot on compilers, uh, including JavaScript engines like V8, uh, JavaScript for Spider Monkey. We also do multimedia kernel networking, accessibility, virtualization and cloud, and I might have forgot some, but uh, yeah, these are the main areas. Uh, this is a picture of last year's Revenge in um, And just to give an idea on where we are distributed around the globe, uh, we are pretty much concentrated in Europe, although there's people in North America, especially the US and Canada. There is a, a group here in South Korea, and there is also uh, myself in the Amazon over here. <laughs> um, and well, and let's, go, let's go straight to the point. So what are the goals and motivation of today's presentation? Well, the goal is pretty simple. Uh, we'd like to be able to run Chromium natively on Wayland-based systems. And that means uh, wherever there is something running Wayland, there should be no uh, constraints or limitation for Chromium, the browser, to run it. So that's a simple goal, and that's what we're trying to achieve um, along the project. Uh, and the motivation, uh, well, there are various things that uh, have motivated us. Uh, but the first thing, uh, and that's a little bit different than uh, different attempt, uh, previous attempt of the same uh, goal is that we consider Wayland a mature solution today. Uh, and it's shipping on various projects, uh, on different industries, for example, on the automotive uh, industry, on mobile, on that stuff. And these are some of uh, the adopters and supporters of Wayland today. So on, on automotive, we have AGR, GEV, the Volvo, the car maker. Uh, on mobile, we have the Phoenix, Yola, Tyson. We also have two kits, like QGDK and EFL supporting. And, uh, and this is 2017 now. We have Fedora shipping by default. We've since 25 to 26 already out. Ubuntu is about to ship. And Debian, I think that soon has shipped really. Uh, Mage Sable has already as well. So we're thinking that there is a convergence between uh, various ecosystems and various of them are supporting and adopting Wayland, uh, as you can see. Uh, so a little bit of background of the project. Uh, and it's important to say that the project didn't, didn't come out of nowhere. There were a previous attempt of have Chrome, the browser Chrome, working on Wayland natively. And that was run by a team uh, in Intel and more specifically, the O1.org lab uh, within Intel. And it's important to highlight a one key concept. So back at the time, the project was named Ozone Wayland. And while well, Wayland is clear was what it is, but Ozone is a Chromium uh, code name for a subsystem of it. So uh, I think it makes sense to, it makes sense to highlight what Ozone is. So basically, ozone is a abstraction layer for the construction of accelerated surfaces underneath the aura toolkit. And that was uh, the concept of ozone back at the time when the project was being developed by Intel. I'm going to uh, explain why I have highlighted uh, the underlying the aura toolkit part of the concept later on. So back at the time again, uh, and, uh, at the time Intel was developing the project, uh, there were the following backends, existing backends. 
the DRI, which were later on became the DRM backend. So it's based on the GBM uh, surfaces, general buffer memory manager, I think. Uh, and it was targeting Chrome OS, as you can see. So that was the one present in upstream programming, the DRM one. And Intel was developing the Wayland backend. It was being developed off trunk. Uh, and the primary target was Linux uh, desktop and Linux overhaul, not Chrome OS. So to give you guys an idea on uh, what their original approach was, and that's a very minimalistic view of what uh, a Chrome browser instance looks like. So basically, uh, when one launches Chrome, uh, he's going to have at very minimal uh, these uh, processes. Well, there's also the cycle process. But I, I wanted to leave it off. So basically, we're going to have a browser instance running. We're going to have the renderer, which is the fully sandbox process that runs JavaScript, parses the uh, HTML, and, and do all the styling, competition, comp competition, etc. Then we have the GPU process, which is kind of halfway. It's not fully privileged, but it's also not fully sandboxed. Uh, and within the browser process, we have a subsystem that we that I call. Uh, but I don't know if that name exists, but I'm calling this uh, a desktop <laughs> integration subsystem. So basically that where uh, toolkit specific and platform specific graphics code we rely on. So basically uh, we're going to have, for example, in that subsystem, uh, X11 specific bits, Lino and Windows stuff. And the approach that was taken by Intel back at the time, and again, that's very minimalistic, uh, explanation is that they've introduced a new sibling uh, to handle when that specific code. So we have Intel, we have Windows, we might have any other, and we would now have, well, we would have back at the time, uh, Wayland specific code. Uh, in their implementation, they also uh, added the Wayland connection being established from the GPU process, uh, which is an approach that's slightly different than the one that we're taking. And there used to be lots of IP, uh, IPC using the old mechanism uh, being exchanged back and forth between the browser and GPU process. Uh, the bits that are on yellow are the ones that were being developed off trunk so they are not part of Chrome's mainline back at the time. So again, that's a very minimalistic view of uh, their previous approach. Uh, back at the time again, uh, the project had good community support uh, various uh, companies and industries actually made use of it. People are shipping these on real products today. So I can see the project uh, successfully because of this. However, uh, in December 2015, so almost two years ago, it has entered what they call maintenance mode, which means that they are not developing new features, not rebasing against new recurring baselines. However, they're taking people and external contributions if there is some. Uh, again, when they entered the mode, uh, they were based on Chromium uh, 49. And just to give an idea, today's uh, baseline is Chromium 63, uh, 63 on the dev channel, which is the development channel. Uh, so it gives a gap, a gap of at least 40 milestones, which in terms of Chromium, that's a huge gap in terms of functionality and stability and uh, whatever else. Um, okay, so since they've entered maintenance mode to now, lots has happened, and as I said, and some of the stuff that happened was that uh, there were some new backends that got introduced in coming tip of trunk, new Ozone backends, including the Axle Ever backend and the Wayland backend, which is the one that we actually uh, care more about. And well, one more thing that is the problem solved them, we have Wayland now, but the plain answer is no. And I'm going to explain why it is a beginning, but it is not a real solution for the problem that we want to solve. Uh, so basically, the desktop integration, which is uh, going back, desktop integration, uh, that in the, the approach that Intel took to do the desktop integration back at the time doesn't comply with uh, the way Chromium upstream foresees for the future of desktop integration in Chrome. So basically, uh, what I'm trying to say is that the approach that they've taken, uh, adding a sibling implementation uh, on the desktop integration subsystem that would handle Wayland code is not necessarily the way uh, upstream Chrome wants to take 
for the future of uh, the subcrop. So I'm gonna, it's kind of a little bit fuzzy, but uh, hopefully I'm, I'm gonna be able to explain what I'm talking about in the next slides. So this on the left is what Inca did back at the time, again, very minimalistic view of it. And that was what upstream chrome uh, looks like today. So here in the desktop integration subsystem, rather than have Wayland specific code or whatever, or the toolkit specific code here, there is a mid layer named Oramos. And this mid, uh, this mid layer is mean to be totally toolkit independent. Because toolkit dependent code will not be on this part of the Chromium subsystem anymore. Uh, they introduced uh, what, again, very minimalistic, uh, try to draw on this part below of the picture. So there is a new entity into the scene, uh, which is the UI service. And just to give a little bit of more background about what the, the UI service is, uh, there is something happening in the Chromium project today which is what they're calling the certification of Chrome. So they've been taking various components and various parts of Chrome, and they've been turning it into a service with a well-defined interface to communicate with other parts of the system. And those services, they communicate with the rest of the system using uh, the module IPC service, which is the new IPC mechanism of Chrome as well. Between all these various services, uh, there is a UI service, and what the UI service is, is uh, the service that's going to actually be uh, handling to keep specific stuff, it will be handling the creation of windows uh, and all this stuff. So what is different between what Intel did and what we are trying to do now, uh, way, uh, the Wayland specific bits, they are not going to be part of the desktop integration directly. The desktop integration is going to be uh, it's going to have RMO stuff, which is the mid layer that I mentioned. RMOs will communicate with the UI service. Uh, that's the new service that I've mentioned as well. And the UI service is going to have uh, way uh, ozone underneath it. So it's going to have various ozone backends, and it's going to run on top of various ozone backends, including Wayland, including X11, or whatever other backend. So basically, we're talking about a new architecture and the approach that we've been following since we started the project is based on this new architecture that Chromium Tip of Trunk has. So again, I have gave a original concept of what, what Ozone was, uh, but in this new model, this new world, Ozone has changed a little bit its concept. So it's now an abstraction layer for the construction of accelerated surfaces, let's just say, but it's now underneath the UI service, it's not underneath Aura anymore. Being Aura, uh, the graphics toolkit built-in within Chrome. Uh, the UI service uh, is also known as MOOS, and that's a term that we're going to be using a lot in the rest of the presentation. So whenever we mention MOOS, it's the module UI service, uh, and that's where Ozone is underneath of. So Ozone is now underneath uh, MOOS. Again, uh, at, at this time, Tipop Trunk has Chrome OS, uh, backends, oriented backends, which is a DRM GBM that I've mentioned. It also has X11 backend for passing, and it has a preliminary Wayland backend as well. And on the Linux side at the bottom, we don't have anything yet upstream. Well, we have some bits, but it's not uh, what we need yet. So that's where we are actually uh, working on. So to give an overview of what I've said, there were an attempt run by Intel, it was successfully, but it has entered mountainous mode. Uh, in the meanwhile, Ozone has received various backends, including Wayland. But all of those, they were somehow targeting Chrome OS, and our target is primarily Linux. And that's how, uh, that's when we actually started on the project. So the project has various phases, and we're gonna go through, uh, we're gonna highlight some of uh, those phases with you guys. So we had started last year, uh, in September, in October last year, and uh, when we started, also it was a little bit, uh, it, there were some documentation, but it was a little bit out of date. Uh, there were no build bots and such. So the first thing that we did, and uh, 
back at the time it was uh, Frederick Wong and I, we've improved uh, the documentation uh, of the project itself, we've contributed that, we've helped uh, some of the Google folks uh, to come up with build bots for uh, all the <coughs> Linux backends, and we've started to experiment with the upstream code, but targeting Linux OS, not targeting Chrome OS. So uh, when we started the Wayland backend, it wasn't functional, and we've made some fixes, and it actually became something that it could run out of Chrome OS. So that feature here is basically Chrome running with Wayland on Linux, not Chrome OS, but it still has uh, Chrome OS specific widgets, as you can see at the bottom of the picture. So there is like this uh, gray stuff and there is some other widgets. So that's again not what we wanted, but that was uh, good enough for us to at least know that we have a starting point uh, to start talking things. Um, so we started to understand uh, some concepts that were not 100% clear to us before. And one of them uh, is what uh, Robert and us came up with some names, and one of them is what we are calling the internal window mode. So basically, when we have this picture of Chrome here, although it runs on Linux OS, it was basically a Chrome OS build running on Linux. We still had uh, various uh, widgets, as I've mentioned, and this is what I am, what we are calling internal window mode. So basically, in internal window mode, there is a window manager, which is Chrome OS window manager, and everything runs within this window manager. Uh, there is also a screen manager, which stores the host hardware that provides display information, etc. Uh, but what is important to highlight is that when we launch Chrome in internal window mode, uh, in other, any other apps in internal window mode, they end up sharing the same single display. So when Chrome OS launches, it asks Sozone to create a native display, a native window for it to draw on in auto. And Chrome runs within this uh, native window. It's not, it doesn't have its own native window. It runs within the window manager native window. So they end up being embedded in a single top level accelerated widget, which is gelback. Um, what we want is not internal window mode. We want what we are naming external window mode. And that's nothing different than a regular desktop application is. So in the end, we want Chrome on top of Wayland. Uh, and that this Chrome instance runs as any other application on the system. So it has various windows, which is not the case of Chrome OS. Uh, and each window in the system has its own accelerated widget. Uh, so that's our end goal. Again, that's nothing different than the regular desktop application window. So uh, the user is going to be the one manipulating such a window, such an accelerated widget, uh, and it's going to interact with the host OS. So it interacts with the host window manager, rather than interacting with Chrome's built-in window manager. And there's no such a concept of screen manager as we have in Chrome OS 4. Um, so, can you play? so after bringing Ozone Rayland up, back up, improving viewbot uh, test coverage and documentation, we had it running for the first time on a embedded system. If you guys look at this, and you might ask yourself, uh, the performance is not good, why did you add this to the presentation? Well, we've added this uh, on purpose because this again was on December last year and it was our first uh, time running it on, a, on our embedded hardware. And we want to uh, highlight in, in the coming slide how better we are than at this point. So basically here we have something working, not fast, not uh, very good, but it was a, you know, promising in our point of view. So uh, that's why I've added this slow running uh, video of it. <coughs> Again, uh, we had a run of Intel's code. We have a build of Intel's code. We have our own build, and we have another third build of software rendering Chrome. So basically, we we run various benchmarks, graphics benchmarks, and uh, Intel's code it was faster than 
our code on the various benchmarks again back in December. So again, why should I add this slide where we are now the fastest one? Because I want to highlight that when we started, uh, we had a something that was promising, but it was still behind in terms of functionality and stability and performance against the existing solutions from Intel. So we were faster than software rendering, but we were slower than Intel. We're going to change that feature uh, as you're going to see later on. Uh, and then we finally entered uh, the second phase of the project. And this phase is important because uh, after uh, 2016, we went to the uh, January and February Bloom um, at Google Mountain View, and we could establish a couple of uh, milestones and a real roadmap for us to follow. Um, and that was with the help of Robert Huber, who is uh, with us today. So uh, our main goal was to modify internal in the world so that it creates accelerated widgets, so it creates real windows uh, for each top level Chrome window. So that was our main goal. We had internal window mode and we wanted to support external window mode. Uh, for that, we needed to extend both modes, which is the device service, and Ozone itself, uh, because those were internal window mode oriented. Uh, and in the end, we wanted to have no major functionality loss if we compared against stock Chrome. So that was our goal. Switch from internal to external in the mode. And if the user runs it, it should not uh, realize that it's running uh, something different than what is already available. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, now I'm handing uh, the presentation to uh, my colleague Maxim, who will talk about some of our uh, developments. So in order to proceed with the external in the mode, we first modify the MOS demo in order to which exercises the ozone packets in order to make it to run external and external in the mode. So what it does is it creates a top level window for yeah. yeah. so the microphone. Yeah. 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 So it creates uh, several top level windows and renders a uh, yellow or triangle or orange. Then we had to make assumptions which uh, make the make industrial display to respond to one to one version so that each accelerated widget is a new top level window. Uh, then we modified uh, the mass the in order to, uh, well, how can I say? Um, Right now, it's possible to run Chrome OS with dash dash mash and dash dash minus mass. We modified Linux so that it would uh, handle mass code as well. And as, as we said, uh, in internal in the mode, uh, the Chrome's window manager handles uh, such things like rendering of the windows, closing the windows, and maximizing the maximizing input, and so on. So, uh, in order to proceed with external window mode, we added, for example, ADJ version 6 support, so that it's right, right now possible to run a uh, problem in external window mode with Fedora or Daniel with Gnome and uh, other distributions. Then we modified keyboard events so that each event would go to the right surface, each thief ended to go. Of course, we have to uh, implement mouse cursors so that when the user moves uh, a mouse to a certain location, it would change the bitmap. Like, for example, if you go to the URL bar or you click some hyperlink and this kind of stuff. Uh, well, we've also added support for touch events. And this initial, initial patch was provided by Collabora. Thanks to those guys. Uh, we've also added multiple Windows support. For example, in case of Wellam, we had to add the pop ups, uh, which are uh, context menu or three dot menu or um, status bubble and other menus. We've also Removed external uh, host manager and 
decorations and used built-in uh, home decorations. And right now it's also possible to, for example, uh, maximize the window by double clicking on it, or move the window, or uh, resize it, resize it, drag. Also, it's possible to maximize it and minimize and restore. Uh, we've also, yes, as I said, added uh, menus and widgets support. So, while we're proceeding with external window mode, we have to modify the ownership of some objects. Uh, we've also had to implement our own keyboard implementation because we couldn't use the Chrome OS one because it uses some, some uh, Chrome OS related one. We've also modified the window tree hierarchy so that each window tree will correspond to a new uh, window. And we've modified our access policy, well, better to say we've implemented our own access policy so that it's now. Um, uh, when the client wouldn't uh, manipulate the window, it's, it's not intended to manipulate like setting bounds or setting different window states like uh, maximize or full screen and something like that. We've also followed the mushroom process model so that uh, the UI service runs in the browser <coughs> process. And last and but not least, we uh, extensively work on stability and hardness of our implementation so that uh, the browser would run uh, smoothly and users would not uh, notice that they run something different, like something different than the stock chrome. So, what's the status of the chrome today? I did to demonstrate you the browser itself. So this presentation runs right now in Chrome with also Python support. I can showcase that this is in version 63 browser. In HTML <coughs> test, we get uh, quite high scores, 526. And you can see some other scores like elements, forms, string, graphics, and other stuff. Uh, we can also demonstrate the RTC, our GC. So it works pretty small, and it doesn't crash. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, let's showcase some web GL examples like this at the bottom. So we get 60 FPS here. <laughs> yeah, here. <laughs> we can, uh, for example, set to 500. So six. Still system. <laughs> <laughs> of course, for thousand is more hard to remember, but still be like fifty three. Um, yeah, which one? Uh, those Did you name one of this one? This one. Yeah. Uh, you can drag the ball and you can move the balls. Yeah. Can you show it runs at 60 as well? So, as you see, it runs pretty good. It's stable, and yes, it should be 60 FPS as well. The counter is not shown here. So, ah, we just uh, uh, start some job somewhere just to see the, uh, how much perform. How much you have? Oh, top. What? Uh, top. Top. To see the, the uh, uh, process uh, CPU and. Uh, <coughs> 
Yeah, during the web build this. But that's completely uh, under development. So we, yeah, until yeah. now, we've been uh, working on making Chrome to work as feature complete as stock Chrome, uh, where we have not talked about performance. However, uh, performance is being heavily addressed uh, on this new system, on this new architecture by the Chrome team itself. So we're basically running on top of really influx. Uh, code and performance uh, tends to get better and better as you know the, the new system being developed establishes uh, and etc. So uh, when we started, we were bad in terms of functionality and performance, and things were getting better, and we are reaching a point where we converge to a good performance and good functionality, whereas performance isn't being addressed directly by us. It's been like uh, the rest of the Chrome team working on it primarily, but. Uh, if you have the chance, you're going to be helping them eventually. That's I guess I, I guess there's a um, uh, at this there's a point in my version there's an Intel implementation that was uh, I didn't start the exactly this test, but uh, uh, with this uh, fishing acquiring uh, it took uh, I guess hand, up to hundred percent up to one hundred percent and uh, it was not thousands. How, how many fishes? <laughs> um, I did not. So it's, it's a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> what, what next level is that? Yeah, so it might be. Yes. So, how about? Eight, eight. It does have a high CPU usage, but hopefully that's going to be addressed. Um, right. yeah, yeah, as, as we said, it's based on the development branch. Issues can be found. And I'm going to showcase you a good bit of time start with the second one. Yeah. So, this is an example of running Chromium on uh, Renaissance R, R and uh, Port. Right? Yeah. So, on Automotive Great Linux. As you see, Compared to the previous uh, example, it was pretty small right now. Uh, this actually one is based, we are based on top of uh, beta channel and M62 in order to see how how it performs so, M62. So here I showcase menus, uh, scrolling using touch screen. Large and large. Could you move to the next one? That's unusual. Yeah, um, just quickly. Uh, some YouTube videos. Uh, our build bot running all the tests 
in order to find the regressions and fix them as soon as the diagnosis them. Those are, for example, serious unit tests, autonomy tests, and of course, must then be a test that found uh, runs multiple windows. And we've uh, defined our replace strategy chain. We replace chromium on a weekly basis. And in order to make our life easier and have as, uh, as less commits as possible, we define the following strategy. So, first of all, we create a commit with some changes or I don't know, a new feature. And then, if we want to make some other changes to that commit, we do fix up the uh, commit. And when we do replacing, we squash those fix up commits with the base commits so that we will have an um, enormous amount of uh, patches on top of the uh, about the after code. And if we have something like after a basin broken and we notice that this patch is ready in upstream but it wasn't included in the, uh, our basin, we try to repeat that from the upstream and mark it like you know, here forward. And on the next uh, basin sheet, we just uh, do not include that because it's already in the, in the upstream. Oh. And of course, in order to, uh, to make sure that we do great things right, we do periodic uh, sync up calls with Google with Robert. And so far, we didn't have any problems with the raising. And this can be a sign like that we do uh, pretty good, and our uh, solution is uh, is outlined with. Uh, upstream solution. Yeah. So what's to do what we need to do is to fix drag and drop. Then we have to fix clipboard. Of course right now it's possible to uh, copy and paste inside the browser window, but it's not possible to do so outside you copy something from the terminal or not to paste that to the browser window, it's not possible right now. Uh, with also need to add multi-screen support. Right now we can get data about the screen, about the on the main screen. Uh, Non-English keyboard layouts uh, do not properly work. You of course can type uh, letters, but it's not possible, for example, to put columns uh, or um, dash dash because some keyboards and keyboards um, like shift plus something won't work. And we still need to ensure that we do not have any feature loss uh, compared to the stock browser. For example, right now we still miss, are missing the tooltips, and this is something to be discussed with Google and will be implemented soon. And of course, last but not least, we are going to start to upstream the changes. Of course, we have already upstreamed some of them, like SDG version 6 support. Or, uh, well, you name it. Of course, we need still to integrate Chromium into the automotive grid Linux because our client is there with us. And we plan to release base locker installers in a way of the dead or active packages. Yeah, and we had. Yesterday we had a, a breakout session uh, with various uh, people interested. We've uh, we've really walked through the implementation. Uh, we've discussed a little bit about uh, the Wayland security review. Those are Wayland security review, and that's already targeting how we're gonna upstream all this. Uh, we've discussed the UI and GPU uh, split that is ongoing within Chrome upstream. That's something that we also have to adapt to very soon. Uh, and the modification of OS on Wayland itself. So uh, I think it was a very interesting discussion. Uh, and uh, we have uh, we have lots to do in terms of uh, training <coughs> and uh, adapting to the, the coming year, uh, coming changes for coming and etc. Yeah, we've uh, went out of time. So 
Uh, again, uh, I am Antonio Maxime. We ran the project sponsored by Renesis from here in here from Gali. If you have any questions. Multi window support. Um, you said that for every window, for every pop up, uh, for like a combo post, you create a separate uh, surface. Yes. It's a new surface. Yes, it is. So, like for, for menus like this, or a complex menu, this is like this. Yes, this is the new accelerated widgets uh, created. So that's a real that's a real Wayland window, same as the way Stockholm handles menus. Yeah. So it says uh, it's a window just like the main window. So you basically create a surface for every native. Uh, we create a surface for every region where Stockholm creates a surface. So on Chrome X11, if they create a surface for Context menu, we follow that behavior. If we click on the menu over here and, and Stock Chrome creates a surface, we also follow that. Uh, same with two tips that uh, when you hover your mouse over, uh, you know, stuff with two tips, it's also another uh, surface. Uh, so different approaches. Uh, That's different than Intel's approach. Mm, I believe it might be different, but it's the same as Stock Chrome. Which you consider uh, our target, not change anything that Stockholm does today. In terms of the game. So, uh, no more questions. Uh, thank you very much.